So welcome back to Newcastle Fans TV. This video is sponsored by One Football. One Football is the app that will have all the latest on the Premier League this season. Liverpool, Manchester City are battling out for the title. One Football have all the stats in regards to that title race. Right, this is the play right and someone with Kyle. Kyle's managed to get a picture with Miguel Almiron. And He's I'll definitely love... injured because I caught him. <laughs> if Kyle can catch him, then anybody can. <laughs> Um, oh, who gets to start with Dubravka? Go on, I'll be generous. I'll let you start with Martin Dubravka, Newcastle's number one goalkeeper. What would you give him out of 10 tonight? Um, I'd give him a six. He took his crosses all right. I mean, but he, he, he made one really good save, one-on-one. -on -one. I think it was with Marnie or Salah. Marnie, yeah. Yeah, Marnie. Uh, brilliant save, one-on-one, -on -one, which kept winning the game, ironically, because the ball went two ahead and been coasting. But, uh, yeah, I'll give him a six because... He conceded three, that's the only problem. He, he conceded it? three, otherwise he would have got higher, you know what I mean? Uh, Matt Ritchie, left wing back. Um, if it was again, we can't fault. People will look at that foul that he gave for the free kick for Liverpool's third goal. So he might well, have well, Fabinho did his best Tom Daly impression. He did, but Rich. For, the size of, for someone the size of Firmino, though, and he dives like that. Diving little bitch, man. Honestly, Liverpool's team's full of them. But. Richie did that earlier on when Sturridge or Fabinho did exactly the same thing. So you're gonna you're gonna get those sort of free kicks. I'll drop my mark down. I thought he played quite well. I thought defence he was quite solid. You know he got the pass before the assist for the first goal. Yeah. Um, difficult one. I'm gonna give him a six because I think obviously people will probably look at that free kick. First centre half. Um, Paul Dummett's next to him, isn't it? So we'll go Paul Dummett. For Paul Dummett played quite well. I think for the first two Liverpool goals, I thought all three centre backs were at fault. The wall out of position, the wall, they just weren't where they were supposed to be. And I thought, I think that marks Dummett down, but his second half he was phenomenal. So I'll probably mark Dummett seven. Jamal's, Jamal's, Jamal Lascelles um, at fault for the first goal, at fault with the second goal maybe. Yeah. I think there's a lot of communi there wasn't no communication between the defenders. You can't give Salah space for the second goal. You can't give Van Dijk a free header. We can't give any def defender, especially Van Dijk. It's definitely at fault. He was marking Van Dijk, and then Van Dijk had his own postcode for the first goal. So I was second. Sorry. Um, what would you mark the cells? It's a difficult one. I think it's not going to get a high mark. I'll say five out of ten for Jamal the cells. Maybe a slight. That's being generous. Maybe slightly generous, but yeah, I'll go five out of ten. He was a bit better in the second half. Uh, Fabian Shaw, Kyle. It's a tough one, Shaw, because... Um, I thought he was our best centre-half out of the three, if I'm being really honest. centre-half, but his distribution in the first half was piss poor. It was shocking. The amount of, like he, I think I remember a moment in the first half where he put a blind and tackling on Marnie, and then he just passed it straight back to them at the edge of the box. I'm thinking, what? <laughs> but uh, I think it'd be fair to say he was the best performance centre-back, because he got up the field, he had a couple of really good passes, a couple of really good tackles as well. So I'd say... Seven. I'm going to go with a seven for Javier Manquillo. I thought he improved. He's improved every game that he's actually played for Newcastle. Missed a bit of a sitter though, didn't he? He did, but it was a diving header. You can only, as long as you get on target, you can't really blame him too much. I thought defensively. Oh, sorry, he, like, but you've got to bury that. I think you're talking about Javier Manquillo, a right fullback for Newcastle. You're not talking about Trent Alexander Arnold or Andy Robertson. That would probably put that away. Um, for me, defensively, he was better as well. I think obviously Salah and Mane are two players, especially Mane, who looks a real threat. And I thought he did okay with them. I thought obviously Salah, he, again, he, I've not watched the second goal properly back. He, who's at fault for that? You don't know. But from what I saw at night, yeah, and from what I saw tonight, I'll give Manky a seven. I thought he was actually quite good tonight. Uh, Centre midfield will start with Key Sung Young. He didn't play too bad. He, looked, he, he, he grew into the game because early on he looked really shaky. Give away a couple of passes, but in all, I thought he was all right. I'd, I'd, I'd give him a six. He, 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 as the game went on, he got a bit better and better. But towards the end, last ten minutes, he looked really tired. I thought the change was needed. It wasn't made, so I'd say Kay Sung Young six. I thought Isaac Head was slightly better. Um, I think yeah, he was. I, I think Newcastle fan Newcastle fans have just have realised if you were in the ground with that lack of appreciation, he just done an interview with um, the club, the club's own TV. Yeah. Um, channel and you know we turn around and Newcastle fans have started saying there's only one Isaac Hayden and from a player that was sent off a card if everyone wanted him to go and people on this channel wanted him to go included. what a transformation if he goes I think a lot of Newcastle fans will give him the best wishes yeah. which wouldn't have been the case six months ago I respect him because I slated him all, all first half of the season I did 
he didn't he didn't do very much. And I says, I think it was the Tottenham preview when we played away. I says, look, you need to stop. You need to stop saying you want to leave and just put your head down and get on with it until the end of the season. You know what he has, and he's left on good terms. He hasn't left yet. <laughs> he's, he's going to leave though, let's face it. He's going to go down south to, for family reasons, which I completely understand. But he's ended on good terms, he's put the performances in and he's played really well for the second part of the season. And he's, and he's, he's turned it round and he's one of the players of the season. So as a kid, and tonight, I'd say seven because he put the tackles in again. He nullified Fabinho a lot, nullified uh, Wijnaldum. Fernandez and Wijnaldum. I didn't even know he played, but then again, he never shows up away, does he? So... Yeah, I thought he was brilliant. So seven out of ten for Isaac Hayden. Um, I'll let you go with the goal scorer, Christian Atsu. I thought bloody hell, shot one. It? it was, but you know what? You've got to be there. You've got to be there, and he puts it away. I think it's you know something that we've been criticising Christian Atsu. I thought it was actually a really good performance from today. It was. He played really well. He he got the defenders, which is something he's usually very hesitant at doing. But I don't know why. But he was against the best, one of the best fullbacks in the league this season, Robertson, and he just flew at him, mate. He had his life. Which is hard to say because it's Atsu, but I'd give Atsu an 8 today, he was fantastic, he took his goal well, and yeah, 8, solid performance from Atsu. Arguably man of the match, get your comments below who you thought Atsu was man of the match tonight. I'll continue with Ayose Perez, my player of the season, and my, uh, for me, I think if you listen to this on the radio show, I'll explain why I thought he's the player of the season, but tonight... He played well. I think he tried to link him with Rondon as much as he could. Obviously, when you're dealing with Van Dyke and Lovren, two big lads, and obviously Van Dyke's probably, in my opinion, the best centre half in the world. For me, he did as well as he possibly could do. He had, obviously at the crossbar in the first half, he was very unlucky. Second half, he nearly scored, trying to wiggle in, wiggle out in the box. I thought he was, I thought he was quite good. I'd give him a seven out of ten tonight. Jason Lovren claims to be the best defender in the world. When he was wriggling inside the box, like you see, he megged him. He probably done him like. He stood next. <laughs> he's, he's, not, he's, he's not the best defender in the world. Not after that, he's standing next to the best defender in the world in Virgil Van Dijk. So I'm going to give Ayers Perez a seven out of ten. Uh, and the big beautiful man Solomon Rondon, what a finish! It was a smashing shot, yeah, right in the bottom corner. Allison has made. It's got 20 clean sheets, but there was nowhere near that one, was he? Nowhere near. And Rondon's been doing it all season, mate. Honestly, I'm, the, I'm his biggest fan on this channel by some margin. And uh, if it's his last game, I wish him well. But I really hope it isn't. Uh, his last game at St James Park, and anyway, I'd love to see him here next season. But will they make it happen? I don't know. But I'd love to see more goals like that. In terms of tonight, I thought he struggled in the air a little bit. But when he did win the ball in the air, he made it count. The knock-ons, the getting the ball up the field he was great at I'm going to give him an 8 he played really well Yoshinomi came on after Liverpool scored the third I'm going to go non-applicable because he was only on for a couple of minutes well 8 or 9 minutes um, Rafa Benitez well, obviously there was a lot of talk with the emotional connection with Liverpool and you know he's still got a home in the Wirral which I found out uh, through Redman when we did the interview um, as well in the preview yeah I thought he couldn't have really. He, he, I think he picked the right side. The right side, in my opinion, with what he had. It's difficult because obviously we've lost the game. Do you think tactically he did well tonight? Liverpool are a team with 90 plus points, and the way you've got to look at it, only what four sides in history, five sides in Premier League history have got over 90 points, and we had them rattled for most of the night. We did. We had them rattled. There was times where Liverpool looked shell shocked. And I think it was through the atmosphere and the tactics and the pressure that will put them under a lot. Again, it was similar to Man City. We tried to pressure them through the midfield and try and win the ball back. And a lot of the time it worked and we put them under pressure. And especially after we scored goals, we looked like we are going to go on to score a couple of more. I think it's hard to say, it's hard to give him a 10 because he's... Oh, I wouldn't have given him that I, tonight. I wouldn't give him a 10 because obviously we've lost and we conceded three goals at home. And defensively, I think we're piss poor for, the, for two goals. Uh, I'll give him, I'll give Rafa I'll give Rafa seven. I think. Yeah, I was going to go six or seven. We'll go seven. I think that's quite a fair, fair score for Rafa Benitez. Obviously, Liverpool just done enough to get the the three points quickly. While we've got you, Kyle, Liverpool are ninety four points. Man City, you got a game in hand. We said in February after we beat Man City that who was going to win the title. Uh, Has that changed for you? I said to Liverpool fans, you're welcome for giving them the title and they've handed it back to Man City in, re in recent months. Like, but uh, it's going to go down to the final day with with Liverpool winning tonight. So, uh, one word: who's winning it? I want Liverpool to win it. I, I, I do. I don't like. I, I don't like Man City. I think they're a bunch of plastic wankers. But that's just me. Who's winning it? 
I, I think Man City's winning it, but I want Liverpool to win it. And finally, Newcastle United fan TV members Kyle and Johnny have agreed on something because I said Man City would win the league after we beat Man City, and I'm going to stick with that. I think Man City will win the last two games quite comfortably. Get your comments below. Do you think Man City will still win the title? What do you think of Newcastle's players' performances? I thought Christian Atta was probably just our man of the match. Do you agree? We're hoping to get to 20,000 subscribers by the end of this year. I'd like to thank you for all your comments throughout the season because it's our last home game. And you know, got one football you know, one footballer, obviously, <laughs> our main sponsors, we'd like to thank them as well. So, like and subscribe to Newcastle Fans TV, and we'll see you next season at St. James's.